This is the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast, Episode 16. Hold your fire, keep it burning bright. Hold the flame till the dream ignites. The spirit with the vision is a dream with the mission. Hello and welcome to this episode of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. My name is John Melly, and this is the podcast dedicated to teaching in-depth and advanced marketing strategies for people in the voiceover and audio production professions. My goal is to help you make more money by showing you ways to leverage your time, charge more for your talents, and allow you to spend more time doing the things you want to do in your life. Hey there, it's John. How are you? Thanks for spending some time with me today. I do appreciate it. We have had, uh, for the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast, as of this recording, 9,676 downloads of all the episodes. Now, that may sound like a lot to some people, or it may sound like a little to some people. Depends on the different podcasts and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, I am absolutely thrilled with that number. And I know I thank you every episode for listening. But I just want to take a moment and let you know that if you could sit where I sit and after I publish an episode to receive the type of feedback that I get from all over North America and literally around the world, you know, comments from people saying that they they came across the podcast and iTunes, they liked the content and they downloaded all the episodes and they're driving across the country and I'm keeping them company while they're doing the drive. It's kind of an odd feeling, but also a very humbling one. So, you know, thank you for your trust. Thank you for listening. Thank you for valuing the content and the show. I really want you to know I mean that. And I also want to take a moment to thank everyone who's joined the Voice Over Marketing podcast group on Facebook over the last couple of months. A quick shout out to Bob Schmidt, Rainier Devera, Doug Jones, Chipotle Adel, Anthony King, Aura Kasi, Russell Webster, Mauro Pagani, Angela Smith, Linda Sands, Mike Bauer, Amruta Karakar, I hope I got your name correct, Rochelle Regair, and Serafina Austin. Thank you very much for joining the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast group on Facebook. And please feel free to share this with your other friends and colleagues in the voiceover and production business. I want to tell you one quick thing. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, make a comment, ask a question, uh, there's a, a tool on the website, and I think also on your smartphone. If you go to voiceovermarketingpodcast.com, on the right-hand side of the screen, there's an orange button. It says, leave us a message. And you can use the microphone on your computer to leave a voice message to me, and it's totally free, and I'd love to hear from you. So please feel free to ask a question, make a comment, whatever, uh, and we'll put you in the show. Um, so this is the 16th episode, and uh, the the podcast is just over a year old. And I around the time it turned a year old, I did a survey, and there were a few things that came back. People want more episodes, they want more frequent episodes of the podcast, and I'm going to talk more about that in a second. The other thing that they want is they want marketing tactics, some things that they can use. And here's a really simple one, and it relates to what the first request was of more episodes. I'm going to be candid and transparent with you and make a damaging admission that I have broken a very important marketing principle with this podcast, and that is consistency. Your marketing should be consistent. This podcast should be no different. I, and I'll explain why. Um, I've had, and here's another marketing principle for you. I had in my head, and I've created the show, but I had this preconceived notion in my mind that all of these episodes had to be interviews. And if I didn't have a guest, that I couldn't do a show. And I started thinking, well, what, what's, what's that all about? Of course I can do solo episodes. I don't have to have guests. And the reasons that it's challenging to get guests is, first of all, I want to make sure that they have something of value to bring to the audience. 
but there's also scheduling, uh, you know, finding a time where both the guest and I are available to record. Uh, sometimes I'll have a whole bunch of guests lined up and we'll do the interviews in advance and I can bank them. Uh, and then there are times when it's just like, you know, I'm having a hard time finding a guest that's got some good stuff that I want to bring to the podcast. And I started thinking, well, there's no reason I can't do a solo episode. I've done them before. So... Here's another marketing tactic, and this is something that slows people down in marketing their businesses. It doesn't matter what business you have. Challenge any preconceived expectations of what you think your market wants. Don't delay in getting your materials out, be it a sales letter, if you're going to mail postcards or send out demos. Don't wait for the conditions to be just right because they never will be just right. Take action. So here's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and do weekly episodes of the podcast. Even if I don't have a guest, I'm going to do an episode and I'm going to share some thoughts and ideas with you. I have no shortage of ideas and opinions. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I'm going to share. And I know that the next episode is going to be a solo episode. The episode may only be 15, 20 minutes long maybe longer, but there's going to be something. And I'm going to get guests when I can, and I think they bring something of value to the audience. That's my primary thing, is I don't want to put something out there that people are going to go, eh, yeah, I don't know, it wasn't much there. I want it to be good content. I want this to be worth the investment of your time. So, moving on, I want to kind of pre-frame the interview that I have. My guest today is a coach of mine, uh, a personal trainer, a fitness coach of mine. His name is Mandla Nkosi. And uh, what I want to do is just kind of tell you a little bit about the interview before we dive in. And the title of this episode is called The Goose That Lays the Golden Egg. And we are the goose we need to lay the golden egg to take care of our business, to create income and opportunity for ourselves. And in this episode, I share a personal story about my health and how it really wasn't moving in the right direction. And the overarching theme of this episode is that we are all athletes. You may not consider yourself an athlete, because you may not be participating in a sport or working out on a regular basis. But the fact is, we use our bodies to do our jobs as voice talent and just to function in the world. Just like a professional basketball, hockey, football, any professional athlete uses their body to earn a living. We do it in a little different way, but we need our bodies to earn a living. So the whole point is to take care of our health to be able to continue to lay the golden eggs that we need to take us to where we want to go. And there's some pretty interesting concepts that Mandla shares in this interview. And I will freely admit that we recorded this a few months back, and I started listening to this the material that we had recorded, and I started putting it together. And as I listened to it, more and more of it made sense to me. And I'm going to invite you and let you know that you may need to listen to this episode a few times because there's some really good stuff in there and it may take a few listens to process it all. I really, I would invite you to make that investment. It is not a long interview. It's, pro it's not even a half hour long, but there's so much valuable content in there that please listen to it a few times. Take notes. Start thinking of yourself a little bit differently. It takes a mind shift in your thinking about how you perceive your role as a voice actor and as a person, uh, that this is going to be something that's really going to be interesting. The other thing I want you to do, and I've put this on the show notes, is I've placed a picture of myself. Actually, it's two pictures. It's a before picture and an after picture. And it's probably a span of three years that the two pictures were taken. <laughs> one was fairly recently. The other one was about three years ago. And the reason I put that up there is for you to see uh, the change that has come as a result of me looking at things and treating my body and my health in a better way. And you're going to hear a little bit of my story about what prompted that. When I saw the difference in the two pictures, I have to admit that it was kind of emotional for me to compare the two pictures. 
just to see where I was and where I am now and just being so grateful that I chose to put my health above everything else, even my business. Because if I didn't do that, then I was going to be going down a path where it wouldn't matter how successful I was financially or business-wise because I wasn't going to be healthy to enjoy it in a way that I could if I was healthy. So I invite you to go to voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. Look at the show notes for this episode where I do have a picture of a before and after picture. And I put it up there maybe to inspire you to start looking at things a little differently. We are amazingly resilient. And so I think you're going to hear that in my conversation with Mandla. So let's take a quick break and we'll go have a conversation with Mandla and Kosi. Well, welcome back. My guest today is Mandla Nkosi, who is my coach, and I've known you, Mandla, for almost two years now. Started working with you, and I had this preconceived notion of coming in to work with you about kettlebells, because kettlebells were a great way to lose weight, which is what I wanted to do. Yep. And unbeknownst to me, I have been taken on this journey that I never thought I would have gone on with you, and it's been eye-opening, educational, frustrating, fun, exciting, challenging, all <laughs> kinds of emotions, but all moving in a positive direction. Uh, and before we get Great. started, oh good, uh, before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Mandla. Mandla combines joint mobility, kettlebell training, and bodyweight exercises, and this is what he wants to do. He wants to provide a pain-free, movement-based solution to fitness and elite athletes, but one of the things I want to talk to you about today, Mandla, is that we're all athletes, regardless of what we do, because in order to do our jobs or perform, we have to use our bodies. Mandla basically has this unique ability to strip every routine, exercise, and drill down to its basic components to make sure that you receive a complete and comprehensive understanding of what's involved. The, the body needs to move in a certain way, a certain range of motion, so that you're not putting yourself into more injury or compounding existing injuries. And one of the things that you have taught me over the course of time is the importance of mobility and ranges of motion and how important the skeletal structure and the nervous system both work together to give you greater ranges of motion and kind of waking up those areas. So, um, you know, I could talk about all of your certifications. You've, you're mobility certified, you're kettlebell certified, you've got more martial arts certifications than you could shake a stick at, but if you did shake a stick at you, that probably wouldn't be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, uh, thanks for coming in and spending some time with me today, and I know our audience is going to learn an awful lot of neat things, and I'm just excited to share your knowledge with the folks out there because we work with computers and microphones all day long. Long. Um, some of us are typing away, editing away, using mouse and keyboard and sitting or standing. And all that's athletic. So how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing very good. Yeah. Um, I'm also excited to be here. I've enjoyed working with you over the past almost two years. Yeah. And um, there's still more work to do. <laughs> and part of why I say that is because everybody does need a coach. Everybody needs someone to help them in, the, in their area of, of learning or something they're studying or trying to acquire. And that's what this has generally become for me. A lot of the stuff I've done in the past had been missing a lot of intricate pieces. And looking at anatomy, physiology, looking at exercise science applied in sports or how exercise translate into a sporting arena has really been eye-opening. Um, looking at restorative movement and recapturing uh, movement that may have been lost over the years and understanding why has been a huge platform to be able to see how to help people really recondition their bodies and regain what you were referring to as ranges of motion or even the functional usage of their bodies and the structures involved way beyond where they may see their limitations currently are or where injuries, procedures, surgeries may have limited them in the past. So, you know, it'll be nice to get people some more information on how they can apply health 
anatomy, physiology, looking after the, the body, the, the, the actual physical tissue that belongs to you, looking after yourself and bettering areas that have broken down a long time ago. And in reference to people's work capacity and investing in preserving that capacity. The goose that lays the golden egg, we're really looking at it in reference to people's capacity to work and looking after or fortifying that capacity. A lot of the folks in this audience are probably involved in some kind of athletics, but a lot of, as I mentioned earlier, spend a lot of time at the desk, at a console, editing or speaking. And I think I told you my story. Maybe the listeners haven't heard this, but I mean, I was working full time and I had grown my business and I had a lot of business all freelance successful things all successful things coming at me I had people lining up with projects to do and I was working at the station coming home working till three o'clock in the morning yep. leaving a post-it note on the yep. ba- went mirror for my wife say set the alarm for yes, nine exactly. o'clock yep I get up at nine I go to work at 10 and I do it all over again I kept doing it and doing it and doing it I was making a lot of money. And then after that kind of stopped for a bit, and in retrospect, I know this was all a cascade of events that led up to this, but in the middle of the summer, this started back in March, April, and then I just kept on going full bore into the early summer, mid-July, I had a kidney stone. Yeah. And it was like, boom, you know, and it's $700 and for the ambulance, exactly and it's is. this, that, and the you other thing. And pay for it it's in like, the end, unfortunately. You, yeah, and it's sit there and they go, the and I said, okay, so I'm making all kinds of money, but I'm not healthy. No. And I'm burning myself out. What's more important? So that's where it comes back to what we started this conversation. And, and John, and John, yeah. The golden goose. Exactly. That, the goose that lays the golden egg. Yeah. Taking care of the goose so you can keep yeah. laying the golden egg. But what were you going to say? Well, well, I was going to say exactly this, the nature of the story that you just told yeah. is exactly what most all of my current client base mm-hmm. are all business people like yourself. All of them at whatever level <laughs> Um, of, of success, whether we're talking $200 million a year in a company or not. What they're all dealing with is how much am I compromising my health to have what I am so driven to get and that I've wanted for so long. Right. And they all hit that place or we all hit that place where we have to reconcile with this is not worth compromising my health for. Right. I don't have to give up on my passion. I don't have to give up on my dreams. I will not give up on my passion or my dreams. Mm -hmm. But I will find a way to sustain my health, better it in tandem. In other words, play some catch up and get my health to where I need to be. And the most empowering part is that when you start to look at anatomy, physiology, and not just try to run yourself through through a ringer, when you start to be very conscious cognitively conscious about the structures involved, you know, how exercise is supposed to be done, whether it's the exercise we've been talking about for voiceover work or exercise in general for overall health that I suggest everybody does, whether they're in the voiceover world or they're they're in any aspect of business and business finance, you know. The idea is is that those exercises should not only restore refurbish and rehabilitate the body, but they should also be integrative into what they're actually doing at their workplace and carry over to their lifestyle, mm-hmm. creating greater ease, greater efficiency, right? And a greater capacity to produce more. If you address the nutritional paradigm, you address the exercise paradigm with conscious, cognitive, understanding the who, what, why, where, when, how of all this, and define what you're doing, make sure what you're doing is beneficial to the body. When you're doing things that are appropriate for the body in exercise, Mm -hmm. you move forward. When you're doing things coupled with nutrition, you move forward. So, And then you increase your capacity to be able to produce more on a daily basis. And on top of it, while you're increasing your capacity to do do more, you're also, because you're spending so much time clarifying Because you're spending so much time defining, Mm -hmm. you start to become more decisive and clear about the decisions you make in your business or in your profession or in your life to be able to create more beneficial, enjoyable outcomes, more successful 
right? Enriching mm-hmm. outcomes in your life. I mean, that's the, and that's kind of the junction and the bridge between health, longevity, and prosperity is that, is that through understanding and looking after yourself, through nurturing the goose in the best way you possibly can and understanding how to, you can maximize your efficiency and effectiveness in producing the golden egg. <laughs> I love and preserve that process. When you were talking about your experience with the lead up to the kidney stone, yeah. immediately I thought about a couple of clients and I'm thinking, it's no coincidence my clients are business people yeah, and they're all throughout the strata, small business people like myself or corporate, literally, are on their way to being corporate titans or are people in their industry who have set the standard. And for a long time, I, I continue to be amazed by how much their work had compromised their health. And then what I started to, to start to think about, I said, wow, if these people have this much work ethic, imagine if they were in a paradigm where they could partition their time enough to be able to look after their health just as religiously as they look after the health of their business. Yeah. So what I, my hopes are in when I meet someone is to be able to have them understand that their capacity to earn is directly correlative to their health. Mm-hmm. They can earn enormous amounts of money. They can become extremely successful or famous. They can do it all compromising their health, or they can do it all maintaining and elevating the integrity and levels of health. That's how dynamic we are. And all of this just involves an education. To be honest, my belief system and what I've seen with the people I have worked with, that the ease and capacity with which we move through our day-to-day and accomplish the incremental successes or the milestones, as we choose to develop that in tandem with our health, becomes greater and greater and more reflexive. And we start to align ourselves with what is more of our true potential. Maybe I'm searching for answers, or uh, maybe it's the light that dawned on Marble Head. Because uh, what that means in terms of we're all athletes, regardless of what it is that we do. Well, the idea that everybody is an athlete really comes from the fact that we all have two arms, two legs, a spine, head, feet, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, elbows, wrists, and the, the various interpretive uh, intake structures like your eyes, your ears, you know, the, the uh, olfactory system, if we're going to get Our a little bit more de- detailed, right? Yeah. You know, so, yeah, what, what is the physical or the physiological tissue or the anatomical tissue for our senses to be able to perceive and interpret our way through the world? Everybody has that. In other words, everybody has the, the same anatomy to some degree. And that anatomy and its the, the top tier of physical expression can be an elite athlete. So mm-hmm. if we look at an elite athlete and we say, okay, the top tier of the expression of that anatomy in motion is exhibited through, say, an Olympic level athlete or exemplary professional athletes. And since everybody has or been, been lucky enough to have all of the physiological structures that an athlete has, then everyone has that potential to be athletic. Basically, everybody uses their body in order to function. Everybody uses their body to, in any aspect of their career, one way or another, whether they like it or not. Yeah. So we are forced to use our body each and every day of our life, whether we would like to or not, yeah. irrespective of the level of demand in our jobs or in our careers or our ambitious attempts to achieve whatever success levels of success we'd like to, we're all really being asked to cater to our to understanding our physical function. Mm-hmm. So even if you're sitting at a computer all day long, you're still using your body. The to body sit. is always adapting whether we like it or not. It's always patterning tissue, developing tissue, just like in an exercise, whether we like it or not. And what we do with our body is exactly and always what we will be able to do in the future with our body. So when you see athletes who have, over the years, gotten better, they have done more things in the right direction. 
people in the voiceover world who use the idea that their body is generating tissue and patterning ways of a function based upon how they use it. And that if, if there isn't ever an assessment of the health of those physiological structures and the way in which they're being used, and is it bettering the health, which will better the function of those physiological structures, then if that's never being assessed and monitored, they can never really know e- either how good they really can be mm-hmm. or if they'll be able to maintain and can they maintain any level of performance. Mm-hmm. The idea that these are anatomical structures doesn't leave them to be separated from tissue getting tight or restrictive and it affecting literal function of either productions of sound, articulation of, of words, the capacity to, to literally use the air and the gases, gases exchange. If you've never learned any aspect of the, the anatomy behind breathing mm-hmm. or li- literally how to leverage the anatomy of breathing, mm-hmm. which is a trained and learned pattern, which sometimes takes months on end to make it almost an automatic skill set, then if you've never done that, and if there are parameters for development for that skill set, in other words, if it does take a certain amount of time for that to become something that you can do on by reflex, then you have a huge arena where you've never leveraged any of your actual capacity. So just like a runner who, if they've never looked at the anatomy and the physiology, or let alone the neurology of the breath, how to use the body to facilitate better breathing during the run, how before the run, after the run, and making the considerations to the nuances of the breath in running, then there lies a huge leverage point to be able to create performance change hmm. in the direction of performing better. So, The idea is in the voiceover world, someone should be looking at the physiological structures involved. And in all reality, it's synonymous with an athlete. The idea that the body works in a almost synonymous environment. It's all the body all the time. In other words, the body is always aware of all its parts, inclusive of the ones that are are being used predominantly. And if you don't cater to all of the body and its parts, even in, in an area where only a certain part has a predominant aspect of usage. Like our voices. Like our voices, which are affected by our posture, which are affected by our breathing, which are affected by our, underst- our understanding to be able to hear the words we're saying, which are affected by the, the physiological structures in our jaw, which are affected by the, the ability for the tongue to be able to articulate it in, through intermittent amounts of intake of air. <laughs> Which is, you know, if you're reading a script, then your ability to read, your, your, your visual clarity at near, at far, and in times of stress, you know, those are all leverage points. And there are visual drills that people can do. There are breathing drills that people can do that are directly correlative. There are postural drills that they can do to better the posture, to do things like reduce the amount of tension around the neck or the throat specifically, around mm. the jaw, the face, the mouth, around the trunk and spine that that may restrict any of the other physiological functions or actions in doing the job, and let alone other parts of the body which may not be so obviously connected that may also facilitate better performance in a voiceover field of work. So there's a lot to consider. Yeah. I I I want to make a comment and then a question. Basically, maybe we can kind of circle back to that thing in terms of the other parts of the body, but one of the things that I've noticed is in doing some of the postural things uh, and you know the, the mobility drills that you've guided me through for a long time now, I used to have more ringing in my ears, in my right yep. ear in particular, and I've noticed that the more I do these mobility drills, the ringing in the ear has dropped dramatically, and in some cases, there are periods of time when it's gone. And that comes from years of, you know, wearing headphones and and playing loud music and all that kind of stuff. But well, you, you can say something you can, about yeah, that? yeah, and you can you can think about what we just talked about about the tissue being laid down, whether we like it or not, the body adapting 
constantly, whether we like it or not, because we're always interacting. Gravity is never absent, whether we're conscious or not, okay? And the nervous system literally generates tissue in reference to gravity and many other aspects of stimulus that we come in, in contact with throughout every 24-hour day. Yeah, like the temperature in the air. Temperature and... in the air, the food we eat, how we run, how we squat, how we lunge, how we tend to practice martial arts, how we sit and read, how and, and they all have different end results. Sitting and reading is literally a isometric holding of majority of the components of the body in a certain joint position which is delegated by muscles. And yeah. if we didn't have a subconscious messaging going to the various parts of the body that are being held still to actually stabilize the body while we use a very a very seemingly small portion of the body to actually read. Mm -hmm. To turn the page or use your eyes use to... Your, yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Or portions of the brain to interpret the language, mm -hmm. and it goes even further because you're creating a visual picture. Right. Or if you're turning words first into audition, you're creating some type of audio sensory feedback from the basis of recalling from memory. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a lot actually happening at the same time, but that isometric muscular, skeletal muscular hold in the position of, like we're talking now, right. you know, the, the way we're holding ourselves to speak to each other, that is a patterning that doesn't happen just by doing it once. It happens over years of training. So there's a tissue adaptative arena for that to happen that is specific to its function. No one ever got really good at sitting and became a marathon Olympiad. That that, that doesn't correlate. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't see people good at sedentary activity and that's all they do and immediately jump at to the pinnacle of human movement performance. So if we were in a chair with no conditioning base, we would fall over. If you relax completely sitting in a chair, you will fall over. <laughs> if your muscles didn't hold a certain tonage, we would turn to a pile of bones. What are some of the common things that you see posturally from folks who spend a lot of time at the computer? And then what is impaired by some of those commonalities that you see? Everybody knows the posture. Mm. It's 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 the very very rounded or protracted shoulders. It's the the slumped over middle spine or thoracic spine. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you'll see a kink in the neck where people are either looking up at screens in awkward ma manners. Sometimes the neck is offset to one side or the other mm. because of the placements of the screen and and the and the nature of the workstation. A lot of times you'll see there's problems with what is supposed to be a nice neutral position in the leg. In other words, the structures of the legs have adapted to the seated position so much that there's asymmetries in comparison. Uh. Um, they, if you just ask the person to stand up as, as straight as, as straight facing forward, you'll see that one leg is rotated in a direction either in or out more so than the other. One foot flares in or out more so than the other. One knee or both knees may not lock at all because they're spending more of their time with their knees bent. Therefore, get, they get conditioned with their knees bent. Their pelvis and or, or hip in general tends to be completely numb because that's the area that becomes their base of support as their feet are no longer articulating the load because they spend a lot of time sitting. And this tends to be kind of common. There are a lot of areas that are even more impacted by an excess of desk work. I mean, with, with all consideration, in a fitness paradigm, no one would say that over-exercising is a healthy thing for every individual to do to the extent of 12 hours a day, 16 hours a day. You mean by working with out? With poor nutritional initiatives or yeah. sustenance or food-based initiatives, with poor rest and recovery 
initiatives. No one would say, play your sport until you pass out. No one would say, play your sport until you pass out, eating food that is high in caloric density, very little nutritional components to it. <laughs> junk food. Junk food. <laughs> eating junk food, diuretics, drinking diuretics. Like sodas. Yeah, yeah. And, and stimulants. Yeah. And um, no one would do that. No athlete would ever attempt to do that because they would rupture things a lot faster because of the intensity of output. But I think people completely underestimate the intensity of sedentary lifestyles. They completely underestimate the intensity of adaptation in regards to eating junk food. And they completely underestimate the intensity and the capacity to leverage change in the opposite direction through education, awareness, and understanding of how to develop appropriately a physical fitness or preparedness base for not only looking good you know, naked in the mirror, mm-hmm. but also for their actual nature of work, whether it be an office athlete or an athlete on the field, and also the adaptative process, how quickly they can revert and change and restore yeah. by implementing the necessary nutritional initiatives and physical and lifestyle initiatives. So for voiceover people, it should be paramount because you're working with with majority of the trunk, head, neck, and shoulders. And I cannot imagine that things don't get anim- animated because <laughs> I've been a big cartoon fan. So, yeah, I mean, I've loved everything from uh, Tom and Jerry right through to, you know, Looney Tunes. But I can't imagine that trying you could separate the physical demand from the actual production of sound with a human body. I don't think it's, it, it's there's no way it's possible. No, it's the, you can't make the sound without the body. Your, your mouth won't work if so you don't have the body. There should be, there <laughs> should be a whole regimen to be able to do that on a daily basis and then even tools, and there are tools, John, you know, they're all s- structures, ju- they're all muscles tendons, ligaments, nerves, organs involved, and they're all interconnected. And the idea is they move a certain way when we're using them or using our voices, and they can move in many other ways that we may not use them. So the idea is to address as many of those ways in which they can move, and you can take off some excess use or overuse on the ways that they're being used more most of the time or you can make them more or you can make them more more useful yeah yeah excellent well i just want to thank you for stopping by and sharing all your thoughts and wisdom and knowledge and everything with everybody in the the show and i want to thank you for being an open-minded awesome person who's willing to make an effort and actually try something new Hmm. you know willing to empty empty the cup (laughs) <laughs> and allow it to be filled. Thank you. Uh, so I, I really I really appreciate having people like you around to do that with. Well, that's it for this episode of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to it at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com so you'll get notices of new episodes. And please share it with your friends and colleagues in the voiceover world. Also, it would be a huge help if you'd like this podcast and rate it on iTunes to help keep it near the top of the list. Feel free to share your comments and questions about this episode and future topics you'd like discussed at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. And if you'd like more information on one-on-one coaching with me and mastermind group opportunities where we focus on growing your business, feel free to drop me a line at my cyber assistance email address at mike at Thanks for listening. Now go out there and share your voice with the world.